In this video we consider an example of the primal dual simplex method. So let's look at the following LP. Minimize x1 plus 3x2. Subject to x1 plus 2x2 is greater or equal to 2. 2x1 plus x2 is greater or equal to 2. And then x1, x2 are non-negative. So what we do usually with the simplex method, we convert the problem in the standard form by introducing the excess variables. We will have minimize x1 plus 3x2, then subject to x1 plus 2x2 minus x3. That's the first excess variable equals 2 and then 2x1 plus x2 minus x4 equals 2 and we have x1, x2, x3, x4 are non-negative. If you were to solve this problem using the simplex method, we can see that our default starting solution wouldn't work. So we couldn't start with the origin because if we select x3 and x4 as the initial basic variables, then the corresponding basic solution will be infeasible. However, let's see what happens when we consider the dual LP. We introduce the dual variables y1 and y2 corresponding to the first and the second constraint respectively. Obviously they are unrestricted in sign because we have the equality constraints. And then we write down the dual. We have maximize 2y1 plus 2y2 subject to the first constraint will be y1 plus 2y2 is less than or equal to 1. Then the second constraint will be 2y1 plus y2 is less than or equal to 3. And then the third and the fourth constraints will be negative y1 is less than or equal to 0 and negative y2 is less than or equal to 0. So let's number the constraints by 1 through 4. And now we are ready to start the iterations of the primal dual simplex method. So let's start with the first iteration so we need to produce a feasible solution for the dual and we can see that in this case our default starting solution which is the origin will work. So let's denote by y bar the origin point. So we have zero vector and uh, when we plug in zeros for y1 and y2 we will have the first two constraints as non-binding and then the third and the fourth constraints are binding. If y bar was the optimal solution for the dual problem, then by complementary slackness we would have x1 and x2 equal to zero in the corresponding solution for the primal and we could ignore the variables x1 and x2 in our formulation and then we would only need to find the solution for the primal such that the remaining variables x3 and x4 are assigned the values that would satisfy the constraints after we drop the variables x1 and x2. And of course we will not be able to find such x3 and x4 because clearly y bar is not an optimal solution but as a result of this exercise we are going to get a direction of improvement for the dual problem and we'll obtain a better dual solution. So let's write down the restricted primal problem. We introduce the artificial variables for each constraint so we'll have negative x3 plus a1 is equal to 2 and then negative x4 plus a2 is equal to 2 and we want to minimize 
the summation of the artificial variables, which is a1 plus a2. And of course, we have non-negativity of all the variables. So x3, x4, a1, and a2 are all non-negative. So let's see what the optimal solution to the restricted primal is. We have the right-hand sides of two in both cases, and we know that both x3 and x4 are non-negative, and it is obvious that we'll obtain the optimal solution to this problem by setting x3 and x4 to zero, and then a1 and a2 to two. So you have the following optimal solution. x3 star is zero, x4 star is zero, then a1 star is 2, a2 star is 2. And uh, we can also find the optimal solution for the corresponding dual. So for the restricted dual, we have the following formulation. Let's denote the dual variables by d1 and d2, and we obtain maximize 2d1 plus 2d2, subject to, for the column corresponding to x3, we have negative d1 is less than or equal to zero. For the column for x4, we have negative d2 is less than or equal to zero. And then for the columns corresponding to a1 and a2, we'll have d1 is less than or equal to one, d2 is less than or equal to one. And obviously the optimal dual solution is going to be d1 star equal to 1 and d2 star equal to 1. So of course in this case it is very easy to find the optimal solution for both primal and dual. Normally we would solve the primal problem using the simplex method and then we would extract this dual optimal solution from the optimal primal tableau. So, but anyway, we obtain the direction 1, 1, and we will use this as the direction of improvement for our dual problem D here. So let's denote this one by D. So to get a new dual feasible solution, what we are gonna do, we will add this direction D star to Y bar with some multiplier theta, all right? So we'll have Y, equals to y bar plus theta multiplied by d star. And of course, our y bar was 0, 0. And our d star is 1, 1. So we have plus theta 1, 1. And this equals theta, theta. And we want to have as large as possible value of theta but uh, the increase in the value of theta will be restricted by the constraints of the dual problem. We need to ensure that uh, this vector y is feasible for our dual problem. Therefore, we need to see how much we can increase theta if we plug in this vector y into our dual constraints. So plugging in theta for both y1 and y2 in our dual constraints, we obtain the following inequalities. We'll have theta plus two theta is less than or equal to one. So this is what we have for the first constraint. Then for the second one, we'll have two theta plus theta is less than or equal to three. And for the third and the fourth, we'll have negative theta is uh, less than or equal to zero. So the third and fourth one are identical, so I'll just write it down once. But then also observe that this inequality, negative theta less than or equal to zero, is satisfied for any positive theta. Therefore, we can drop this constraint from our ratio test, but from the first two constraints, we'll have three theta is less than or equal to one, and then three theta is less than or equal to three. And clearly the solution to this system of inequalities will give us theta is less than or equal to one third. So the highest value of theta that we can have here will be one third. And we are going to use that highest value to obtain our new point y. So y is gonna be equal to 
one third, one third. And this completes the first iteration of the primal dual simplex method. Now we are going to set our y bar to this y that we just obtained here, one third, one third, and we'll proceed to the second iteration of the primal dual simplex method. So we have iteration two. In the second iteration, we start with y bar equal to one third, one third. And plugging in one third, one third into the dual constraints, we see that the only binding constraint for the dual will be the first constraint. So remember, this was the constraint for which the ratio test gave us uh, the winner. So one is the only binding constraint. Therefore, when you write down the restricted problem, we only need to keep the variable x1 and we can ignore the variables x2, x3 and x4. So we'll have x1 plus the artificial variable is equal to 2 for the first constraint and then 2x1 plus the second artificial variable is equal to 2 for the second constraint. So our restricted problem is minimize the sum of artificial variables a1 plus a2 subject to the first constraint again is going to be x1 plus a1 is equal to 2 and then the second constraint is going to be 2x1 plus a2 is equal to 2 and we have x1 a1 a2 are all non-negative so we have two constraints in this problem we'll have two basic variables and one non-basic variable right so if we had x1 as the non-basic variable then we would have a1 a2 equal to 2 and we can see that this would not be an optimal solution because we can easily get a better solution. So therefore x1 will be basic in the optimal solution and we can see that x1 star, the optimal value for x1 in the solution to the restricted primal will be given by 1 and then a1 is gonna be equal to 1 as well and then a2 will be our non-basic variable. So a2 star is equal to zero. All right, so, and then looking at the corresponding restricted dual, we will have maximize 2d1 plus 2d2, subject to d1 plus 2d2 is less than or equal to zero. Then we have uh, d1 is less than or equal to 1 and d2 is less than or equal to 1. And we can easily find the optimal dual corresponding to this primal optimal solution and it's going to be given by d1 star equal to 1, d2 star equal to negative 1 half. All right, so we obtain the direction d star given by 1 and negative 1 half. And next we need to proceed to the ratio test to determine the highest value of theta when we write down the expression for y. So we'll have y is equal to y bar plus theta times d star. And our y bar is given by one third, one third, then plus theta times d star, which is one negative one half. For the first entry, we have one third plus theta. And for the second entry, we have one third minus theta over 2. So this is our y1 and y2 
values and we need to plug them in the dual constraints in order to get the inequalities for our ratio test. So for the first inequality, we have y1 plus 2y2 is less than or equal to 1. Plugging in these values for y1 and y2, we obtain y1 is going to be 1 third plus theta. And then 2y2 is going to be 2 times 1 third minus theta over 2. And this is supposed to be less than or equal to 1. So this is our first inequality. Then the second inequality is 2y1 plus y2 is less than or equal to 3. So for 2y1 we'll have 2 times 1 third plus theta. Then for y2 we'll have 1 third minus theta over 2. And this is less than or equal to 3. So this is our second inequality. And the third and the fourth inequalities are negative y1 is less than or equal to 0 and negative y2 is less than or equal to 0. So we have negative y1 is negative 1 third minus theta is less than or equal to 0. And then negative y2 is negative 1 third plus theta over 2 is less than or equal to 0. So let's simplify and solve this system of inequalities. First of all, observe that when we do the algebra for the first inequality, we'll obtain the trivial inequality 1 is less than or equal to 1. Because look, for theta we have the coefficient of 1 from here and negative 1 from here. So theta disappears and then we have one thirds plus two times one thirds is one. So we obtain one is less than or equal to one. So we essentially can ignore the first inequality. And this is not a coincidence because recall that x1 was a basic variable in the optimal solution for the primal, meaning that by complementary slackness, the first constraint of the dual will be binding at the optimal solution so d1 star plus 2 d2 star is equal to zero. And recall that y bar had the first constraint of the dual as binding. So therefore, when we try to move from y bar along the direction d star, the first constraint of the dual remains binding for any value of theta. All right, so therefore we could have ignored the first constraint just based on the fact that the variable x1 is basic in the optimal solution for the restricted primal. Now, for the second inequality here, we have the coefficient for theta from the first term is 2, and then we have negative 1 half from here. So 4 halves minus 1 half is going to give us 3 halves theta. And then we have 2 thirds plus 1 thirds is 1, and we had 3 in the right hand side. So this is less than or equal to 2. And then from the third inequality, we have theta is uh, greater or equal to negative one third, which is always the case. So the third constraint will not be violated for any positive value of theta. And finally, for the fourth constraint, we have theta over two is less than or equal to one third. So we have this system with two inequalities. From the first one, we have theta is less than or equal to four thirds. And from the second one, theta is less than or equal to two thirds. So the solution to the system is theta is less than or equal to two thirds. And the highest value of theta we can have is two thirds. Therefore, we conclude that our y that we obtain by adding theta d star to y bar is given by one third plus two thirds, which is one. And then one third minus two thirds over two, which is zero. So we obtained y equal to one zero. And this is our new solution to the dual problem d. And we are ready to proceed to iteration three. 
So for the third iteration, we have y bar equal to one zero and plugging in one zero in the constraints of the dual, we already know that the first constraint remains binding. So when we plug in one zero into the second, uh, third and fourth constraint, we can see that only the fourth constraint will be binding among these three. So the first and the fourth constraints are binding, meaning that to formulate the restricted primal, we will need to drop the variables x2 and x3. So only x1 and x4 will be present. And for the first constraint of the restricted primal, we'll have x1 plus a1 is equal to two. And for the second one, we'll have two x1 minus x4 plus a2 is equal to two. So let's write down the restricted primal. So we have minimize a1 plus a2 subject to x1 plus a1 is equal to 2 and then 2x1 minus x4 plus a2 equals 2 and we have x1, x4, a1, a2 are all non-negative. And in this case, we can see that finally we can obtain the zero optimal solution, the optimal solution with the objective of zero for our restricted primal by setting x1 star to two and then x4 star to two. We can have a1 star equal to zero and a2 star equal to zero. So finally, we were able to find the solution to the primal problem, which satisfies the complementary slackness conditions together with this vector y bar here. So we conclude that the solution that we get for the primal, which is given by x1 star is equal to two, then uh, we had x2 star is going to be equal to zero. So whatever variables x are not present here are set to zero, remember. So then we have x3 star is zero, then x4 star is two. And then for y star, we have this y bar here. So y1 star is uh, one y2 star is zero. And now we can claim that these two solutions are optimal for the primal and the dual problem uh, respectively. And it is easy to verify that uh, two zero, zero two and one zero are indeed optimal solutions to their respective problems.